بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأراضي Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of inner and outer peace in Islam. We talked about the concept or notion of salam and also sulh, very briefly, of course. Another notion is amn. Amn is also a very important uh, term, which means safety, security, kind of, again, peace. In the Quran, this term and its derivatives are mentioned uh, 48 times in 43 ayah. So some ayah has more than one. 29 times in Makki chapters and 31 in Madani chapters. So almost equal. So it shows that this is something that you always, you know, need and you have always, you know, concern about it. Those which were revealed in Mecca are mentioned in 31 places in the Quran, those four uh, which are mentioned in uh, Medina are in 17. And I mention some of these verses and inshallah then we will explain more. Sometimes Amn is mentioned with Aleph and Lam, Al-Amn. For example, in Surah An-Nisa, verse 83, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُلِّ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا one of the things that can be used as opposite to amn is khawf, fear. It's not the only opposite, but khawf is when you don't feel you know, uh, at peace and you don't feel you know, safe. Uh, so this ayah says that when something happens to them, whether it is amn, abel khawf, whether there is peace and safety or there is fear and worry, they quickly spread this news without waiting for the Prophet to comment on it, to you know, guide on it. So in a community, you know, we need to wait for the leader of the community, especially when there's Prophet, so that he decides whether this is something to share, not to share, you know, uh, because uh, especially things that can frighten people, you know, you have to be very careful. So this is Al-Amn with Alif and La. In Surah Al-An'am also, we have with Alif and La, actually two successive ayah in Surah Al-An'am, we have two Al-Amn, 81, 82. وَكَيْفَ أَخَافُوا مَا أَشْرَكْتُمْ وَلَا تَخَافُونَ أَنَّكُمْ أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزَّلْ بِهِ عَلَيْكُمْ سُلْطَانًا How should I fear your idols? You don't fear that you are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَشْرَكْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ You are associating partners to Allah and you don't worry. And then you want me to worry about not worshipping your idols? فَأَيُّ الْفَرِيقَيْنَ أَحَقُّ بِالْأَمْنِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you are really aware, 
which group, which parties should feel safe? Those who believe in God or those who are mushrik, polytheists? Who should feel safe? One of the things that bring amn is iman. If you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you have amn. Especially inside you feel very safe. This is verse 81. So, ayyul, fa ayyul fariqayna ahaqqu bil amn in kuntum ta'lamun. Then the next ayah. Alladheena amanu wa lam yalbisu imanahum bizulmin ulaika lahumul amn wa hum muhtadun. Those who have faith and they have not mixed their iman with zulm. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, there is iman, but this iman is not strong enough to stop doing zulm to themselves or others. So there is something good, but also something negative. But those who have iman, and this iman is free from zulm, these are the people who have al -am. They have security, they have peace, safety. And these are the people who are guided. So these are three times with alif wallam. There are two cases that we have amn without alif wallam. We call it nakar. And this ayah is related also to the uh, inshallah, coming of Imam Zaman, Jalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif. Surah An Nur, verse 55. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al rajim. Va'adallahu alladhina amanu minkum wa amilu salihat. La yastakhlifannahum fil ard. Kama stakhlif alladhina min qablahim. Wa la yumakkinanna lahum deenahum alladhir tada lahum. وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنَا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ So, Allah has promised believers who do righteous deeds that they are going to be inheriting the earth like we have in نريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض. And Allah is going to establish for them the religion that He is pleased with that religion for them. So without any limitation, without any uh, fear, without any you know obstacles, they can practice their religion. After being fearful, this fear is going to be replaced with amn. They have no worry. Internally, in their own community, from outside, enemies, nothing is going to disturb their peace, their security, their safety. Especially whatever they want to do as a mu'min to practice their faith, uh, they feel very safe. يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا And they are going to be able to worship Allah in a pure way. Another ayah which has amn as nakara is surah baqarah verse 125 a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim wa idh ja'alna albayta mathabatan lin nas wa amna wa attakhidhu min maqam ibrahim musalla wa ahidna ila ibrahim wa ismail an tahira baytiya lit ta'ifin wal aqifin wal ruk'i as sujud one of the blessings of allah has been even before Islam, Allah has blessed the people of Mecca and those who are around uh, Kaaba to have amn. And Allah mentions this in the Quran that why they don't think 
they have a very safe place while people around this sanctuary are being you know uh, hijacked or you know being you know uh, taken by others yutakhattafun nas khat means to steal to, to rob so allah made masjidul haram and the area around it safe in his generation in his takwin but also in tashri he has asked us also to observe this man dakhalahu kana amina so we should also observe this we should not uh, kill animals there you know or for example you know sh people should not fight there one of the reasons imam hussein alayhi salam left mecca on the 8th of zil hajjah Everyone is going for Hajj there, but Imam Hussein al was there for a few months. But on the 8th of Zil Hajjah, he left because he was worried that agents of Yazid may kill him. And in this way, sacredness of Mecca will be compromised. He didn't want this to happen. So, this house, Allah says, we have made it Amnan, is a safe place. So, Al-Amn, three times, Amnan, twice. We have also Ma'man in the Quran. Ma'man means safe place, a place which is safe. In Surah Tawbah, verse 6, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهُ if any of these polytheists, pagans, they ask for some protection, they say, give us some refuge, I want to come to Mecca, even when, you know, they had, you know, done lots of, you know, mischief, etc. No problem. Give them refuge. Give them protection. They can come, see what is happening in Mecca, what is Quran saying, what is the Prophet saying, what is the logic of Muslims. And then give them protection to go back to their own safe places. So no one should harm them. Also, it's not only if Rasulullah gives, you know, if any Muslim was giving someone aman, so that person was safe. Sometimes we have it as a verb. For example, amena, amen to come. Fil can be muzare, ya'manu, ya'manu kum. It can be ismifail, amenun, amenin. So there are also many cases that it's not amn or al amn, but other derivatives are there. Some of the scholars have mentioned something very beautiful. Uh, you can yourself you know, go and uh, check uh, in the Quran. It seems that Amn is never described with an adjective. There is no Sifatu Musuf. Or there is no Muzaf and Muzaf Allah. It's not added to anything. It always comes as an absolute sense. In the sense that Amn is something that you cannot partition it. Security is something that either it's there or it's not there. If you don't have 100% security, you don't have. When you don't feel safe, even if it is for one risk or 10 risks, you don't have security. So Amn is something comprehensive. With respect to external threats and also with respect to the worries and problems inside, inshallah, we will talk about Al Amnu Nafsi, your psychological, you know, peace. Another thing which it's very interesting is that with respect to Salam, it's from the same root as Islam. 
Islam is also a way to reach peace and establish peace. Okay? Salam and Islam are very closely connected to each other. Soul, peace and salah are also the same root. Either we are in good cor uh, situation or we are in a corrupt situation. So you see how fundamental is peace. And amn and iman are also closely connected. So our most important terms like Islam, like Iman, like Salah, Islah, Muslih are connected to notions which all indicate peace. Is it clear? So Islam and Salam, Salah and Sulh, Iman and Amn, and all Salam and also Aman, Aman. You know how fundamental is Amana in Islam? We have beautiful hadith that if you want to test someone, how good is this person? Don't look at their salat or ruku or sujood, etc., or siyam. Maybe this is a habit. Sometimes people over time have made a habit of praying or fasting. It's not a big thing, you know. Actually, sometimes they are so much used to it that if you tell them that now you should not fast, it's haram to fast. He says, no, I have to fast. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> when it's harmful to your health or you are traveling, you must not fast. But this person, no, from my childhood, I've always been fasting the Muslim. I cannot stop fasting. So this is worrying. Are you fasting because you are used to it or you are fasting because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The same Allah says, don't fast now. Actually, this is good that sometimes Allah asks us not to do the things that we are normally doing so that we do it with good intention. So hadith says, don't look at, you know, he's going to ruku for a long time, sujood for a long time. Even if it's not show off, suppose it's sincere. Yeah? We have people who sincerely have long sajda, ruku, etc. But it has not penetrated into their heart. So how can then we test them? Or test ourselves, even, you know, you need sometimes to test yourself because you're not sure about yourself. So hadith says, look at sadq al-hadith wa ada al-aman. How truthful they are and how trustworthy they are. Truthfulness cannot become a habit without understanding because it keeps changing in different scenarios, different environments with different people, different subjects. So you cannot be all the time telling the truth unless you are really a virtuous person. It's just something that you can do it without developing truthfulness. And also, ada el amana to deliver the trust back. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Before Islam, by people of Mecca who mostly were pagans, mushrik, and many of them, they were not, you know, virtuous. But they recognized him as as sadiq al-Amin. Rasulullah was known, was distinguished by being honest and trustworthy. I was thinking many years ago that why among other things, because Rasulullah had other good qualities. Rasulullah was, you know, very, for example, generous. He was very kind, you know, he was very brave. But why these two qualities were very much drawing the attention of even pagans? 
Then I came to this conclusion because these are two qualities that first of all are very important for social life. Because social life very much needs mutual trust. If I cannot trust people, I cannot live with them peacefully. Uh, yeah? And to be able to trust people, I should trust what they tell me. And also I should trust that if I have amana, they give me back. So two important social qualities plus two important qualities that people needed in order to believe in his message later. Because if someone is known to be truthful and he said, God has sent me this message, then they cannot doubt. Or when he is Amin, he cannot betray. He cannot betray God, cannot betray people. And what is, you know, very surprising, and, you know, we hear these things, but we sometimes need to, you know, take time and reflect. This is amazing that 13 years after the advent of Islam, at the time of migration to Mecca, so, uh, Medina, sorry, from Mecca to Medina, Rasulullah had lots of problems in Mecca. Some people were Muslim, they had left, they had migrated already. Not many people were Muslim were left in Mecca. And you know, in Darul Nadwa, they made this plan that from every tribe there would be representative, they all together go and attack and kill the Prophet. Okay? So 13 years of fighting Islam. 13 years of torturing Muslims, killing Muslims. Saying this man, na'uzu billah, na'uzu billah, is majnoon. This man is sahir. This man is taught by others, mu'allamun, majnoon, sahir. Saying all these things. But they didn't doubt his amana. And still, he was looking after their amanat. Neither Rasulullah said, these are my enemies and enemies of Allah. And let me, you know, throw away their amanat. Nor they thought that Rasulullah is going to neglect. So in all those difficult times that Rasulullah had to migrate, then Amir al had to bring, you know, uh, three fawatim, three fatimas who were there. One of the things that Rasulullah was very concerned was to deliver these amanat back to the people who were... Maybe 90% mushrik. This is amazing. Therefore, I say, and inshallah, uh, in, in Farsi we say, Arzu bar jawanan ibnist. Means young people can have you know, dreams. So I'm not young, but inshallah. <laughs> Still we can have dream. My dream is that inshallah soon. If Muslim community if it is not known for anything good, at least if we are known among all other communities that we are Sadiq and Amin. We don't, for example, know anything about you know, religion, philosophy, Irfan, anything. Just if we can be known, really, that Muslims never tell lies and never betray their trust. If you want to do any contract, any business, I don't know. If you want to do anything, Muslims are the people that you can 100%. This is my dream. And I don't think it's difficult. It doesn't need lots of training. Just we need to make you know, this commitment, this vow, this promise to Allah. That even with your worst enemies, we are going to be amin. As the hadith says, Addu al-amana ila al-barr wal fajr so we should try, inshallah, to achieve this. If we have these two qualities, all respect come to us. Even financially is better, politically is better, spiritually is better, and people will be interested in Islam. What is the secret of these people are so trustworthy, so honest? Yeah, they will be interested, say, so, you know, this must be because of their religion. So we have very simple, 
solutions. But unfortunately, we try you know, things that are not simple and we don't get anywhere. Let us try this, inshallah. Inshallah, we continue this discussion about Amn and Aman, inshallah, tomorrow. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin.